she is dead. You're stupid. She just fell unconscious. The white wolf will save her. But I heard. The commoners claim it's our prince's doing. Geralt! It's good to see you. The commoners claim Stannis is involved in Saskia's poisoning. They're looking to slaughter him. What's stopping them? The knights, Adernian noble lords. Not easy to raise a hand against a blue blood. A peasant by the name of Calton was at the council. He didn't seem to respect anything or anyone. Calton's a blackguard. He'll use any excuse to raid and plunder. He has a taste for noble blood. They say he buries gold looted from the lords in some gorge. Looks like things are getting nasty. Hear me! What do you want? I'm Skill and Balden. I keep order and Vulgan. Are doing a nice job then? Where was you when they poisoned Saskia? Give us the prince! Get the flails! Stop! Jorvis! Squirrels! Everyone who wants to leave this yard in one piece, keep your hands off your weapons! I don't care if you're a serf or a lord. I'll kill you all if need be. What's going on? The servant carrying wine during the feast said that Prince Sternes and Olgan poisoned Saskia. We want justice! You want revenge. It's not the same thing. We don't care. Saskia's fallen as if dead, while the poisoning prince and noble lords rush to herd us onto the field and sell us to Henselt. We won't let them! You lie, Carlton. Nobody's being sold out. The poisoner must be caught and tried by law. Your law? What then? He'll pay a fine and get spanked on his ass? We'll spank him, all right, with an axe to the throat. Where's this servant? Safe. The square tell keep an eye on him. Why is the prince hiding in his house if he's innocent? Enough! I'll shoot the first to reach for a weapon. Then heads will start falling. There's more of us. You can't kill every... Then you'll be first. Now back off! We need to act quickly. We? Oui. The mob's akin to a forest after a drought. One spark and the fire will be unstoppable. I'm no peacekeeper and definitely no judge. We're both in it, whether you like it or not. Why are you getting involved? For her, Gwynblade. Certainly not for this rabble. What's your plan? I'll frighten them a little. Bleed them if need be. I'll buy you some time, but be swift. I can't hold them off for long. Question the peasants and the nobles, and talk to the dwarves. Maybe you can get to meet Stennis. Even if he's guilty, I'm sure he's prepared a suitable story. You'll know how to sort the sheep from the goats. Also, find the servant who started talking so suddenly. You won't have time to talk to everyone, though, that's for sure. Rolling gun, you surly dog! Change your tone when we... Can we have a word? Why not? I'm Ogden, a founder. I cast mugs, plates, chalices. You need any, Witcher? No, thanks. The tableware in the council chamber is your handiwork? It is. Made it back in mere Farragut's time. Since then, each and every goblet has hit the floor dozens of times, and what happened? Nothing, because they're steel. My goblets are indestructible, impervious to both the fury of sovereigns and servants who are all thumbs. Saskia's chalice was new. Aye, it was. Back in Mayor Farragut's day, a venture Saskia was no more than an etch in a da's breeches. Who ordered the goblet from you? That goblet was a gift. A way for the folk of Vergen to pay tribute to Saskia. I got the honor of casting and presenting it to a lovely leader. The lass liked it so much, she's not used any other vessel since she received it. Was the order for a normal goblet? Not a chance. It was supposed to be a gift. I ornamented it richly, even on the inside. Not terribly practical, that, as it's hard to get clean. Some scum is bound to remain. But I wanted it looking downright regal, worthy of our Saskia. The other chalices were not ornamented on the inside? Of course not. Any chance there could have been two identical goblets? 
Why, there's no craftsman that comes close to me in Vergen. Could someone have tried to copy your handiwork? Ha! I know of one who's been trying for years, but he's a fumbler, a screw-up. He's not produced one decent vessel. They all look like the work of a drunken elf. Thorax, his name. See you at the inn. We'll grab a beer. This is good to see someone's taking care of it. With the virgin's death. I could tell you what he lost with her life. Power. As I see it, every princeling likes to scheme. Guilt must be proven. Otherwise, it's vigilante justice. I'll grant you that, Reimster. Give us this whole power! Say, Rolling Witcher, come over here. Sally what do you want? We of noble birth always had to protect the plebs from their own stupidity. If not for us, the world... I don't have time to listen to songs praising the nobility. Know anything about the attempt on Saskia's life? No, I don't. But whatever the truth, the mob cannot lynch one of royal blood. So truth means nothing to you. That's what makes us different. I didn't say I don't care about truth. Just keep in mind there's a world order that mustn't be destroyed. An order that allows injustice. If the prince turns out to be involved in this attempted murder, he should face a tribunal. The rabble doesn't understand the principles ruling the world. Or they do understand them and simply don't like them. Saskia is a wise woman, but there's one thing she doesn't take into consideration. This war will be over one day. Who will sow the crops and milk the cows then? Saskia called the serfs to arms. Do you think they'll want to plough fields again? You may be right, but it's certainly not my business who'll plough your fields. Farewell. You will change your tone when we put a sickle to your throat. Save your threats for your hog-smelling woman. Why is he lingering about? Like the stench in a dwarven hovel. Those witches be craving gold. This one's sure to say the prince is innocent, then sting Stennis for a pouch. He better search for a lad who served the virgin instead of pissing around. Yeah, once then with the prince, he'd better take care of the magnets. Throwing their weight about too much they are. The prince stood right next to Saskia during the council. Did he have access to the wine cellar beforehand? How should I know? Why flap your mouth then? The prince is a wealthy lord. Bribing a skivvy to poison the wine is nothing to him. Just because someone can afford gold teeth doesn't mean they'll pull their healthy ones. What's it really all about? Who's backing you? We want justice. We don't need no one backing us. We knows what to do. How would you punish the prince? If a lad counts hens wrong, he'll be flogged. What should we then do with a man poisoning others? Kill him. A land without a ruler is a nightmare. We have a ruler, the Virgin of Eden. It's not certain she'll live. Then we'll choose another who'll manage. But he must be one of us lads. That way, he'll understand us. And all people is gonna be equal, our way. And the non-humans? We have enough dung on the fields. Let non-humans find a non-human land. Get away with them! You know Saskia's servant? Willie of the Oblates. He, he handled the wine, indeed, but loves the virgin like a sister and mother put together. He'd gladly get quartered for her. Where's this Willie of yours? Hiding in his shack, afraid of them lords. Squirrels guard him. Farewell. Give us this whole flower! Rolling dung, you surly dog! You will change your tone when we put a sickle to your throat. Save, Save your you threats for your... I'd gladly hear your opinion on the situation. Finally, someone reasonable. It's obvious Henselt bribed some serf who then did what he was told. The local peasants love Saskia. Those surly dogs would gleefully accept a heavy pouch. Show me a serf with any sense of honor. That's interesting. Just think it through. The prince couldn't have done it. The wine was in plain sight. Only the servants touched the decanters. And who are they? Commoners. Then that same commoner incited his folk to stand against the nobles and the prince. Something to think about. Enough of this charade. Try to be reasonable, folks. Sit down and talk in peace. We've talked enough! Come on, lads, let's drag the prince from his hovel! 
Vergen's not a cesspit for anyone to shit in. There are laws to abide, and Scalen Burden's job is to uphold them. There's no law allowing a serf to threaten a king's scion. I, Silgrat, brother of Seltkirk, the greatest knight to walk Edernian land, say so. Does it matter who was born in a castle and who in a pigsty? Any fool can prejudge and condemn. It's easier to accuse than to prove guilt. A peasant servant claims that Prince Stennis supposedly attempted to kill Saskia. Why would the prince do such a dastardly deed? Bear in mind how eminent is his lineage. That's why. The mongrel covets the crown. Do you even remember how valorous he was towards Saskia during the negotiations with Henselt? Pretending to be with her, he was, sly fox. Taking the simple peasants in. But us lads ain't so dumb as you lords think. See for yourselves how the commoners hate the prince, spitting venom like adders. They hatched a plot to dispose of him. Saskia's servant said that... Where is this servant, might I ask? If he's got something to say, why does he hide like a thief? The answer is simple. He's a fraud. He's hiding to save his skin from you, horse hands. Squirrels have to guard him. One last question. How could the prince poison Saskia? It's a known fact that servants taste wine from the barrels before the virgin sips it. No need to poison the wine. Smearing the poison inside the chalice would be enough. I never heard of anyone poisoning a chalice. You haven't heard much then. One of the Emperor's forebears died after sampling some lamb. He was always scared of poison and ate supper with his cook. The murderer spread poison on one side of a knife. Then he cut the meat so that only a small piece was poisoned. The witch is right! Give us Stennis! Saskia's got her own chalice. It was commissioned from one of the dwarves. The order came with a very detailed drawing. Even so, how did it come into Saskia's hand? A good point. We can't be sure if the prince poisoned the wine. Stennis is blowing hot and cold. Everyone knows that. You were supposed to prove his guilt, not insult him, Yokel. Tell us who else would do it. A peasant wanted to hurt the miss? Never. It's cause of her you noble dogs can't ignore us. A pig won't cut its own throat. A peasant's not foolish enough to raise his hand against his savior. Perhaps it is no peasant's deed. However, that doesn't mean the prince is guilty, fool. Answer me this. Was not Stennis' room next to Saskia's? Do not the wines come from his own lights ridden cellar? Can he not enter the virgin's kitchen at will? Yes. His serene damned the prince can curses on his kin. Nobody in Vergen wants to kill Saskia. And even if they wanted, nobody but Stennis could do it. It appears Stennis would benefit the most from Saskia's death. Your Highness, this is dangerous. I am not afraid. Fear is a commoner's trait, unfit for one with royal blood running in his veins. What do you want, to judge me? Is a prince a common thief who steals a dozen eggs at the market? You stand before royal majesty, and you raise your hands against it. In this world there are crimes that can be forgiven, and crimes that, by any means, cannot. Just as a mother killing her own child, or a man slitting his own brother's throat cannot be forgiven. A crime against one anointed by the gods themselves also cannot be condoned. He who raises hand against divine right is not worthy to walk this world. And what about he who poisons the Virgin of Eden? Firstly, Saskia is alive, so no one can blame me for her death. Secondly, you have no proof that it was I who tried to murder her. And thirdly, I assure all gathered here, I won't rise above the law. However, only she the Virgin of Eden can judge me. Can he? And if Saskia won't get well, who's going to judge you? I believe she can be cured. But if the gods decide otherwise, we'll summon a coven of the wise who can pass just sentence. Those are words worthy of a true sovereign. I am the one you should look to for guidance. Let my deeds be the flame that lights up your darkness. The Prince has a right to a fair trial, no matter if he's guilty or not. We can't deny him that. What will the peasants do if we hand them the Prince? Will they hear him out? No. They'll hang him from the nearest tree or tear him limb from limb. What will happen if we allow a lynching? What if people see that might makes right? 
Who'll guarantee they won't desire to avenge their wrongs, real and imagined? Who'll protect people whose only fault is noble birth from the exasperated mob? And where will it lead? The peasants are furious. They didn't dare mount a frontal attack. But they haven't forgotten about Stennis, and won't. It'll be that way until Saskia regains consciousness. She won't keep order by strength alone. Unless it's a great strength. We need an authority figure, and royal blood. Five courts go to waste in the Dwarven dungeon at the moment. There's also Henselt. Going into that haunted mist is madness. Stealing Stennis away would be easier. No. Anything involving Stennis will cause a riot. I've had enough of the peasants and nobles barking. Saskia's the best leader I know, but she can't hope to defeat Henselt's army with this rabble, which is why I'm going to get reinforcements. Where? Four Squirtal units await in hiding to the east. Time to summon them. You'll make it in time? I must. Anyone order an exquisitely adorned goblet from you? I get the occasional commission for tableware, sure. But what exactly are you talking about? Saskia's goblet. Was that your handiwork? That ugly bucket! Did you intend to offend me? Whoever made that thing should be whipped! I certainly hope Saskia orders her vessels from me next time. If she gets a chance to order anything again... I've killed Rivians before. Rivian. Greetings. Shove off!
Dammit! Take that.
Who are you, and what do you seek? Geralt of Rivia. I seek the standard of the Dun Banner. Who are you? Eckhart Hennessy. Handsome and color bearer of the Dun Banner. The best force to issue from the land of Kedwin. It's nice to chat and all, but I think we'll finish this another time. Who are you, and what do you seek? Geralt of Rivia. I seek the standard of the Dun Banner. Who are you? Eckhart Hennessy. Handsome and color bearer of the Dun Banner. The best force to issue from the land of Kedwin. You may not remember me, but I remember you. Where from? I served in the Dun Banner. Liar! I fought beneath its standard at Brenna and at Fergen. The Battle of Brenna. The Nordlings shoulder to shoulder against the Black Ones. The Redanians led by De Reuter on the right. The Talus leading to Meria on the left. A splendid sight, was it not? It's nice to chat and all, but I think we'll finish this another time. I see you've returned. Yes. The Battle of Brenna. The Nordlings shoulder to shoulder against the Black Ones. The Redanians led by De Reuter on the right. The Talus leading to Meria on the left. A splendid sight, was it not? You're mistaken. The Redanian regiments were on the left. The Temerians took the center. Correct. Perhaps you speak the truth. Try me again. Tell me, for this you must know. Who was chief commander of the Nilfgaardians at Brenna? Menno Kohorn. I am beginning to believe you. Menno Kohorn. The repulsive head hound of the Nilfgaardian pack. But a great commander. He will again let the Nordlings blood. Would you agree? Your memory has suffered after death. Kohorn perished. At Brenna. You are vigilant. I could not deceive you. Because I am of the Dun Banner. Perhaps you did fight at Brenna. It was so long ago I may have forgotten you. But Vergen is another matter. I can't answer for the state of your memory. You are right. Memory often fails us after death. I cringe to admit I've forgotten who commanded the armies during the Battle of Vergen. Perhaps the most important day of my life. And the last. Be so good as to remind me. Seltkirk led Edern. Vandergrift led us. Well done. Not all know that. Some believe that the kings commanded the armies during the battle. Or that their mages did. Do you believe me yet? Not yet. But I shall when you tell me how you survived the massacre at Vergen. Most of the Dun died. The survivors withdrew south. The fires blocked our way back to our lines and we fell into Biggerhorn's trap. I know, the cowardly bastard. You have proven that you served in the Dun Banner. May I take the standard? Why do you desire it so? It will help me lift a curse. Curses are of no import to me. This one should be. It has stopped King Henzel's army from advancing. The Unicorn has returned. He stands at Vergen's gates. With your help, he'll avenge the Dun Banner. The standard lies in the sarcophagus. Take it. You will also find the sword of Colonel Gondor. Now, it is yours. Thank you. Where have you left your mount? There are no horses here. True. I would gladly drink with a brother from Brenna, but I am an unfettered soul. Strong drink means nothing, tastes of nothing. Perhaps I miss that most in death. Guard the standard. I grasped it firmly even as they cut me down.
Morgonen! Hi-ho, 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 hi-ho. I tried locating Triss, but the mist disrupts the megascope. There's a weak signal nearby, probably on the other side. In the Kedweni camp? You'll have to pass through the mist. The mist is full of wraiths. I'll help you. I'm continuously scanning the battlefield. I'll show you the way through. I'll find you when you enter the mist. Farewell, then. We still need royal blood. I know. Hensult. We need his blood, not his death. How many times do I have to tell you I'm not a Kingslayer? You wanted to discuss something? There's proof that the Wild Hunt is a vast accumulation of the power. Something that would interest mages, you'd think. To the mere mortal, anything that is not immediately comprehensible is suspect. The product of a conspiracy. And where there's a conspiracy, well, it's obvious mages must have hatched it. I'm a mortal, though probably not a mere one. I found the notes of a man who spent his entire life... Paranormal phenomena interests Cynthia, my uh, intern. Take this up with her. I found one of the ingredients for Saskia's cure. Show me. Interesting. Getting warmer, but still not there. It's as if I'd sent you to get me the sun and you'd brought me a candle. We need something massive, an item of real power, Geralt. This is a dwarf's dream. Stolen and magically encased in this crystal, it would do if it were stronger. You know what this means? In addition to normal harpies, there are Solano in the area. Solano? Dream snatchers. The only harpy species to develop something resembling intelligence. They magically bind dreams to mountain crystals. I heard they once inhabited this area. Solano live among regular harpies, but their lair should be full of stolen dreams. One of those would be powerful enough, I'm sure. You'd have to enter the harpy lair through the quarry. Unfortunately, the gate to the caves is locked and Cecil Burden won't open it. I asked him on another occasion. Stubborn as a mule, that one. But we must not relent. Saskia clings to life by a thread. Let me show you the desire contained in this particular dream. Don't be hasty to judge. Hmm. Yes, I can feel it. Whose dream is it? Cecil Burden's. In that case, I need to see the Alderman. Got a feeling he just might open the gate for me. I'm trying to learn something about the Wild Hunt. Very interesting phenomenon. Like all mysterious things. Willing to share what you know? Well, I would be. Provided you found the notes of Morton Collis first. He devoted almost his entire life to researching the hunt. We could go into detail if you had his scribblings. I found Morton Collis's notes. So, let's see what you've learned. Well, there are a few documented facts. But Collis notes the existence of plenty of myths and legends. Very true. Where shall we start, then? First and foremost, Collis studied the hunt's movement. Oh, it's well known that the wild hunt moves north to south, never in the opposite direction. That's what I remember, and Collis's research confirms it. I'm just having trouble understanding why that is. The retinue's trajectory brings it into our world at the North Pole. Thus, once here, the wraiths can only move south. Collis claims the hunt's appearance can be predicted by observing the Orcan Nebula. And eclipses affect how often it appears. In any case, it arrives on the winter solstice, though not necessarily every year. 
Collis calculated that the hunt slips into our world in those years when the nebula is in the eastern sky. When I pursued the hunt, I passed through many abandoned villages. Well, the wild hunt abducts young people. What for? The race might need workers, warriors, or meat. Collis seems to favor the slave theory. What's the sorceress's take on the hunt? The topic makes them uneasy. Since the Council and Conclave banned the use of mind spells, the Wild Hunt has been a taboo topic. There's some link between mental spells and the cavalcade? Both addle the brain. Anyone who has come in contact with the Wild Hunt has experienced mental instability that either takes the form of insanity or amnesia. You see, the race emit a magnetic field that severely distorts perception and impedes brain functions. People say the Hunt's appearance is an omen of war. In our times, wars are so frequent, we might even consider flights of honking geese as their harbinger. The Hunt traverses our world in winter. Wars usually break out in spring. But only because rulers wish their soldiers to die in battle, rather than of cold. Let's summarize. Based on his observations and calculations of the Wild Hunt's movements, Collis arrived at two equally important conclusions. The first was that the hunt is made up of knights who perished in various worlds and have reconvened as a retinue of vengeance. His second hypothesis states that an unknown, extremely powerful force multiplies wraiths, whose task is to travel between worlds in search of slaves. Both theories seem probable. Each time someone runs into the hunt, the wraith's magnetic field causes their mind to descend into chaos. By inference, another meeting with the hunt and its field should reverse the effects of the first. Perhaps. Someone who lost their memory or their mind on their first meeting with the hunt could recover either on the second meeting. But I'm afraid that's unproved. Anyone who has managed to escape the wraiths would rather die than meet them again. So, you can lose or recover your memory by meeting the wild hunt. Do you know something I don't? I have amnesia. But my memory's been coming back since a certain event. Since when? Since I killed a Spectre, the King of the Wild Hunt. You know Sheila? I've seen her cast spells. I've seen all the great sorceresses at work. Sheila's quite manly in her style. Precise, logical, exceptionally composed. Is that your opinion? We agree in our assessment. Triss Marigold, on the other hand, is talented. That's interesting. Kira Metz and Margarita Lo Antiel are both blasé. Seem then there's Francesca Finderbear. I take it Philippa has none of these flaws. Ambition. You wanted to discuss something? Remember the antidote for Saskia. It's very important. You associate Give us with a sorceresses. Kiss. Would you look at that, friends? Geralt of Rivian. Coincidences do happen. Greetings. <laughs> you don't know me, but I know you. I'm an employee of the Vivaldus Bank, and I'm business here. I'm to check up on the local mine's profitability. Vivaldi doing all right? Full of beans. And as per the instructions given to each of the bank's agents, I hasten to inform you that you have unlimited credit. Hmm. I could use a loan about now. Sure thing. However, my means are limited. I can offer you the standard short-term loan for those working in high-risk professions. Will that do you? I'm sure Vivaldi wouldn't mind if I borrowed a bit more than that. It's nearly all I've got on me, but I'll manage somehow. Ah, uh, I never felt... Greetings, colleague. Hmm? I'm Urso, rat catcher. Traps of all sorts, for mice and for trolls, and a special discount for witches.
damnation. Think you might have gone a bit too far with Stennis? Mummy spent too much time pampering him, so he thought he could do anything he pleased. He got what he deserved. Maybe it'll all blow over, or maybe there'll be another war. History's like a coin that falls out of your pocket. You never know where it's gonna roll. I need to get inside the harpy lair. No chance. I know all about the harpies. They steal dreams, collect them. I found one, but it proved too weak for our purposes. I need a stronger one. So I'm asking you nicely. Open the damn gate. Listen, Witcher. I want Saskia to recover, I do. But don't ask me to turn this town into a circus just before we battle Hensalt. My grandfather locked that gate for a good reason. Imagine if we could all go in there to look at those dreams. Dwarves, peasants, their Skoyatel, Adernian nobles even. All seeing the desires of others. Terrifying. It would be the end of Vergen. What's more, legend has it the oldest stolen dreams can become reality. And I don't want nightmares stalking Vergen's back alleyways come nightfall. Open it. I'll make it quick. Stop pissing me off. You're acting like a drunk suitor. No means no. You know, don't know if I should mention this, but the dream I found belongs to you. What are you talking about? It's an embarrassing affliction, I imagine. Hell, even something of a political liability in your case. Some might even call you a freak. You're the Alderman. An ages-old tradition is vested in you. On top of that, you now lead the preparations for Vergen's defense. You wouldn't dare. Imagine your ancestors carved in stone. Condemnation, not pride on their bearded faces. Who knows? Maybe you'd keep your office but you'd be the talk of the town for ages. And your nephew? Poor kid. I'll open the gate. I promised Scalen's mother I'd be sober as a judge to the end of my days, and I aim to keep my word. I don't give a damn about ages-old traditions and piss on loose talk. But you're right. I cannot compromise Vergen's morale. You must bury this thing. The secret dies with you, never to be spoken aloud. Understand? I do. Thanks, Cecil. And good luck staying sober. How many more will turn up? Harpy feathers, just like you wanted. Good work! Why, it's even a pleasure to pay you! I gotta admit, that might have been the strangest job I've ever had. Well, it's hardly done.
I'll hear you out, but I've got a bad feeling about this. I need a few more feathers. Who is it that needs them? You or this collector? But he does, of course. Pretty suspicious. Why didn't you tell me how many I was supposed to bring right off? I... I needed to see the quality. Just a few feathers more. <laughs> I'll pay extra. Decide. Let me think about it. I've got some more feathers. Sleek and untattered. I hope that'll do it. I look at them and select the finest. There's your payment, <laughs> with a small bonus. What am I supposed to do with the ones I have left? Whatever you wish. I've no need for them. Farewell. Where are you headed? Greetings, Vatgern. I'm glad to see you again. Again? Flotsam? The fire? Funny how these things work. I'll never forget that. Oh, unimportant. Needless to say, I'm deeply indebted. Hmm. Sorry. No need to be. But I feel I should pay you back somehow. I've started anew here, you know. That always builds confidence. Sure I can't tempt you with something. Wait a minute. Is this what I think it is? It is if you want it to be. We elves might seem strange by your standards. You saved my life. A bit of joy as recompense is not too much to ask. I'm intrigued. It's been a tough day. I think some joy might do me good. Am I ever glad to have that debt off my mind? I'm happy for you. I'm happy for us both. Oh, I have a memento for you. Take this. A key? Mmm. To an old mine pit. I've no use for it. But you're quite there. Alright. Thanks. 